in the last video we talked about what surface energy is and and we also said that once a fresh surface forms in a material the surface atoms have this urge or or tendency to combine with new atoms and molecules in the surroundings and form new bonds and and basically try to reduce their overall surface energy so so as you can imagine the higher the surface energy is in that material the the stronger is this drive or or will to form new bonds and reduce their surface energy so higher the surface energy higher the surface energy stronger is is the drive or or will stronger the drive to form new bonds to form new bonds so that makes sense right so how do you know which materials have high surface energies and which materials have relatively low surface energies so so one sort of parameter that gives you a hint as to how to compare surface energies in different materials is is the strength of the chemical bonding that's present in those materials so you go back to your definition here what we said earlier was surface energy was the energy spent to break bonds and create a new surface so so the harder it is to break bonds in any given material the higher the surface energy is right so so in metals if you compare metals and plastics for example so metals the typically have surface energies in the order of magnitude of about 1000 millijoules per meter square so 1000 millijoules per meter square so if you notice the units here it is basically energy spent per unit area so joules per meter square so this is just the order of magnitude so there could there is a range of values for different metals here so plastics on the other hand so if you take many plastics the bonding involved in hydrocarbons is much weaker than in metals for example so it's much easier for us to break bonds so the surface energy values associated with many plastics is pretty low compared to what it is in metals so if you take polythene for example the surface energy value quoted for polythene is only about 30 millijoules per meter square so as you can see it's much much lower than what it is for metals so another example i want to talk about here is is uh, one material that is pretty unique for its extra low surface energy it's called teflon so this is the material that goes in our in the coatings of our non stick cookware so its surface energy value is only about 18 millijoules per meter square so so it's exactly this property of extra low surface energy that makes us makes it ideal for non stick coatings so you get the idea here so the harder it is to break bonds the higher the surface energy is and stronger is the drive to form new bonds so so that is the the rough idea so another concept that i want to talk about here is that of surface area to volume ratio so if you take a block of material and this block has a certain volume a surface area and a certain energy associated with the system here so so let's say the total number of atoms in the system is n total and that is going to be the sum of atoms from the bulk and the atoms at the surface right so the number of surface atoms is going to be a very tiny fraction of the number of atoms in the bulk as you can see th there is very little green here and a whole lot of red so it's a tiny fraction of the total number of atoms or really small compared to the bulk atoms and then the energy associated with the system e total let's call it e total is again going to be the sum of energies of all the individual atoms in this block right so it's it's the combined energy of the atoms from the bulk and the combined energy of the atoms at the surface so again as n surface here the number of atoms at the surface is so tiny so the energy contribution from the surface atoms is also going to be really small so it is a very very small fraction of the total energy very small compared to e bulk so now if you take this block of material and actually grind it down into powder or or break it into smaller chunks so what you are essentially doing in that case is you're spending a whole lot of energy and breaking all these bonds and creating many 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 new surfaces in this in this block of material so some of these atoms that were once in the bulk all of a sudden find themselves sitting on top of a surface so with their broken bonds and now they are at a much higher energy level 
the the energy contribution from the surface of this material here is going to be much higher so as you can see there is a whole lot of green here than what it was before and and uh, both end surface the number of surface atoms and the energy contribution from them are no longer negligible right so are not negligible in this case in fact they are going to be a, a significant portion of the uh, these values here n total and e total so remember the the volume of the system doesn't change it's the same volume of material but now by breaking it down into smaller chunks you have increased the surface area by by a lot so so the surface area to volume ratio in this case surface area to volume ratio is going to be much higher in in this form in powdered or granulated form than in this block form so in many situations a material behaves or reacts very differently based on what its surface area to volume ratio is and and how much of its total energy is coming from the surface energy part of it so let me give you a a simple example here and show you what what i mean so i'll erase this part to create some space here so let's take the example of table sugar dissolving in water so table sugar is made up of these sucrose molecules so this molecule has the six membered ring and a five membered ring and you have these oh bonds that are sticking out at the surface so i don't want to delve too much into the chemistry or the structure of the sucrose molecule because that's not the point here so let me just replace this with a simple representative sketch so this is your sucrose molecule and and you have these polar oh bonds sticking out at the surface of the molecule and the reason they are polar is because oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen and and so the electrons that they share are going to be pulled more towards oxygen and so oxygen is going to develop a slight negative charge and hydrogens as a result are going to develop a slight positive charge so you have these alternating positive and negative sides on the surface of the sucrose molecule So now what happens is that the positive and negative sides on one sucrose molecule are going to get weakly attracted to the pos the oppositely charged sides on the neighboring sucrose molecule so they form what we call hydrogen bonds So it is these hydrogen bonds that actually hold these sucrose molecules together in let's say a grain of sugar or or a crystal of sugar So now what happens when these sucrose molecules or these sucrose grains come in contact with water molecules so water again as you know is a polar molecule right so there is a microscopic separation of charge here as well so oxygens are slightly more negative and hydrogens are slightly positive so again because both of them are polar you have these hydrogen bonds that form between the water molecules and the sucrose molecule so these water molecules they surround themselves like this and and so what's slowly happening here is that the the hydrogen bonds that existed between the sucrose molecules initially are being slowly replaced by these water the, these hydrogen bonds with the water molecules so so eventually the sucrose molecule is going to get dislodged from this network and and go into the solution and that's how table sugar dissolves in water so the reason i bring this up here is that if you take a block of sugar versus let's say sugar in powder or or granulated form so it's same it's the same volume of sugar but this is in powder or or granulated form so so the biggest difference here is although both of them are chemically identical they're both made up of the same sucrose molecules but the the surface area to volume ratio in powdered form is going to be so much more higher than in this block form so what's happening is that these oh bonds that are sticking out at the surface of each of these grains here and and are exposed to the water molecules number of such bonds is going to be so much higher so it's much easier for the water molecules to form hydrogen bonding here so that the rate of dissolution of sugar in water is going to be much higher here whereas here water has to slowly dislodge the sucrose molecules from the surface and then work their way in so the process is here is much slower So what this tells us is that a material in different forms can behave or react very differently based on its surface area to volume ratio.